Hey, if you're new to me, my name is Sherry Capilla and I'm a Christian life coach for weight loss. I have a weight loss program and it's called the Seekers Method. And it's a 90 day Christian coach led program where for 90 days, you and I work together to just step you through your weight loss through a whole different way. Um, so what this video is about today <clears throat> is I have come up with a list of 10 things that you can do to prepare for your weight loss success for the remainder of 2020. What you're going to see in this video is a live coaching that I did today inside of my weight loss program called The Seekers Method. And this was the, um, every Sunday I do something called the Sunday Seeker Sesh, where I lead the seekers who are in the program through what is coming up this week, what they've been doing last week. I address their questions. Um, you know, I give them tips and tricks because the reality is, is I'm 47 years old and I'm sitting here talking to you right now at a weight that I could not get to on my own when I was doing all the diets, all the exercises, and just prioritizing prioritizing my life really according to the way that the world told me to do things for weight loss. And the minute I stopped doing it and I started leaning into God, <clears throat> the weight fell off. Um, and so everything is laid out in the Seeker's Method. So this particular video is just a behind the scenes video where you can see <clears throat> what coaching with me is like. Um, again, it's called the Sunday Seeker Sesh. Now, when this video starts out, you're going to see me, you're going to hear me rather talking a little bit about where we are in the journey. Because in the Seekers Method right now, we just ended the summer session of coaching. So since about like April or so, we've been doing 90 days of coaching so that they, so that these women could actually lose weight over the summer. I don't know about you, but for the majority of my dieting career, I couldn't lose weight over the summer because of s'mores and margaritas and wine and, you know, all the things. Um, <clears throat> but we just spent this summer together going deeper, seeking God and enjoying life and losing weight and stopping with all of the things. But we just ended today on the Seekers Method. And so today in this Sunday Seeker Sesh that you're going to see, I cue it up by telling the women, okay, we don't start the Seeker Session again until September 21st, because once you're in the Seekers Method, you're in it. And I just keep walking you through it and helping you to go deeper and deeper <clears throat> so you can start to lose weight from the inside out. So what I did in this coaching today is I taught the women how I shouldn't say I taught the women. I shared with the women what to do between today when we stop the Seekers Method um, because they're used to having daily coaching with me. What we do between now and when we start again because we start again on September 21st and you're invited to enroll if you would like to be a Seeker. If you would like to try out the Seekers Method and see what it's like to just kind of you know, be a seeker instead of a dieter and what it's like to be led by a Christian life coach every single day of your weight loss journey, then I'm going to be doing something called the Seeker's Method Experience. And that starts on September 21st. Um, it's free one day or one, one week, me and you coaching. You're going to see what it's like to be in a community of women who are trying something different for weight loss. And for a lot of women, that's how they make the decision to enroll. And then once they enroll, their life is changed. So in this coaching, you're going to see it start out where I'm talking about what to do between the time of the 40 days between now and when we start again in September. <clears throat> and then I'm going to dive into the 10 things. If you're interested in knowing about how to kind of recover 2020 and to start losing weight so that you can see, so that you can just be who you want to be physically and spiritually and emotionally for Christmas and how to get rid of all of the cravings so that, you know, on Halloween, you don't eat all your kids candy or Thanksgiving, you don't just fill up on pie and end up in bigger pants like I did, or um, that you can just stop conforming to the patterns of this world and let your body, let your mind be renewed so that you can finally transform your body. Oh, I could just talk and talk, but here you go. This is a behind the scenes look of um, what it's like when I do a Sunday Seeker Sesh inside of the Seekers Method. And it's a sneak preview of, a sneak peek rather, of what it's like to be led by a Christian life coach to your weight loss success. See these 40 days right now as a huge opportunity for you to really get ahead. Let this be a time of, I love this, God, God gave this to me earlier this week. See these next 40 days 
as a time of your blessing preparation. You are preparing everything in your life, in your schedule, in your body, in your mind for change. So it's blessing prep, if you will. We start, like I mentioned, on September, December 21st, and that's, think about it this way, that's really an opportunity for you to get a jump start on all of your New Year's Eve goals. You know how we all think that way. It's like we conform to the pattern of this world enough to think that, you know, we can go hog wild the end of the year with, our, with um, Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and all of the things, and that we'll just kind of fix everything, all the damage, when we start over again in January. Mm -mm. You're seeking. You don't, there is no calendar here. So see it as you having an opportunity to get a jump start on your 2021 goals, if you're somebody who's still kind of thinking in that kind of way, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I encourage you to just see this as your opportunity to really plan ahead in your blessing prep, to put yourself in a conditioning state, to get your mind and your will and your emotions and your spirit and your body and your schedule and your family and your house and everything ready for September 21st when we start again. It's also an opportunity for you to just really get conditioned and prepared for Thanksgiving and Halloween and Christmas so that when those things start happening, because they're gonna happen, COVID or not, they're going to happen. And when those holidays come, you know you have stories about all of the treats that accompany each of those holidays. If you can get your body conditioned to no longer be dependent on sugar and grains and all of the things, as many of the seekers who are on this live video right now can attest to, you will be able to walk into a room where your family's making the Christmas cookies and not even care about eating the batter or not even care about eating the bag of Halloween candy that you bought for the trick-or-treaters that is now in the cupboard that you start digging into because it, the temptation is gone. It just is non-existent. And I can tell you that once you are completely transformed and basically regenerated and you start walking and coaching in the spirit and you become a, a seeker and you shed the skin of a dieter, those foods have no power over you. So this is an opportunity. Okay, so we are going to start talking now about preparing for the autumn season because most of us will have changes in our lives, in our schedules, in our routines that start happening around the August and September timeframe. And I encourage you to step into these changes proactively. This is an opportunity that a lot of us don't get. And this is where the project manager and me is coming out. And I really want to, I, I just encourage you to receive this as blessing prep. That's a gift. I mean, that is a gift. There are 10 things that I'm going to share with you today, 10 things to prepare for your weight loss success for the remainder of 2021. Because fall, the reality is, is fall might be a season, but it is not a strategy for weight loss success. You need to plan this season of change. You need to plan into this season of change. If you just fall into this, that's exactly the output you're going to get everything is just gonna be a disaster. And you know what, I'm excited for you because that's not where you are anymore. So let's start talking about the 10 things that will help you with weight loss for the rest of 2020. Okay, the first thing is, the first thing on our list, bear with me. Girls, I have got to take a drink of water because, mm. okay, number one, the first thing is identify what you did well in the Seekers Method. You know, spend some time. That is self-care. Spend some time, get alone with yourself and assess what you did well and what you didn't do well and possibly what you need to change for the next round of the Seekers Method. As I shared with you earlier, these 10 things that I'm sharing with you right now are gonna pop up and populate in a little bit on the screen or in the group. So identify what you did well and what you didn't well and what you need to change for the next round of, wis of the Seekers Method. This is you gaining wisdom, okay? Because if you just keep perpetually repeating the same mistakes, you're not getting anywhere. And this is, ladies, we are on a journey toward your sanctification. This is where spiritual growth and maturity happens, which means you need to stop the car, pull over, put it in park for a few minutes and assess what's going well and where, and what's not going well and what you need to change 
so that you can graduate to the next step, to the next level, so that you can keep going higher, so that scale can keep going lower. Okay, number two, assess whether you will choose a new meal plan for September 21st or whether you're gonna stay on the same one. Some options, the things that I recommend are keto, paleo, and Whole30. Um, I encourage any one of the, you know, consider what you might just, you know, if you've been Whole30, maybe you will say, okay, you know, it's starting on September 21st. I am, I'm gonna maybe just allow, I'm gonna stay on Whole30, but I'm gonna allow cheese. Or I, you know, Whole30 was amazing, but now I really wanna dive into keto. And here's the thing, between now and September 21st, the onus is on you to become a subject matter expert on that meal plan. And the reason I don't tell you, here's your meal plan, because that's conforming to the pattern of this world. If you don't know what's in your food, if you don't know how that food makes your body feel, if you don't know how that food affects your thought patterns, you're going to cut, you're always going to be on a diet. You're going to be in situations where you're going to go to restaurants and you're going to see food options and you're going to be confused about what you can and should eat because you've been so accustomed to just following a meal plan that you've not actually learned what works for your body. So if there's a meal plan change in your future between now and September 21st, buy the book get the book, rent it from the library, do whatever you've got to do, and you need to become a subject matter expert. Stop relying on um, a meal plan or, you know, all of the things. Get, get out there, educate yourself so that you can know when you look at a menu or when you're in a situation whether you can or can't eat that food. Okay, um, that was number two. All right, number three, accept Assess what kept getting you off of track and plan into that weakness with more calculated effort the next time. You need to be aware of what, of your weaknesses, of your obstacles, because it is true. We're not dieters, we're seekers. We are on a spiritual journey. We're awake to the fact that we are walking out our sanctification right now. We are on a spiritual journey, but that requires physical discipline, okay? Hear that. It's going to require physical discipline. It's going to require that you stop, ooh, I just spit everywhere, that you stop worshiping your comfort. It's gonna require doing hard things. You can do hard things. Hard things are where you are spiritually matured and physically developed and all of the things. Okay, so that was number three. Assess what, keep, what kept getting you off track and plan into those weaknesses with more calculated effort. Number four, evaluate your growth. How far you have come on this journey. How far you have come, just pay attention to that and take a look at what hard things, what obstacles you overcame. Because a lot of you, even if the scale didn't move, look at what you did do. Praise God for what he is doing in your life. Where is there evidence of his hand and in the ways that he's been leading you on this journey and strengthening you? Where, are there, where is there evidence that you actually started to crucify your willpower and started to truly step into God power? Where is there evidence that you stopped leading in your head knowledge and you started leading in your heart faith? Because for some of you, that transfer happened because for a lot of us, our faith is just in our head. It's just in our intellect. But some of you, something clicked and you started to lead in your heart. And when you lead in your heart, in your faith, you go deeper with God. You start activating trust. And that's the difference maker right there. Okay, number five, where on on this seeker's method journey, where did you notice diet habits still being present? Were you not able to release your dieter's mentality? Take a look back on this journey. Where were you dieting? Where were those dieting mindsets still prevalent? Did you have a hard time getting rid of the scale? Did you weigh yourself and how did that affect you? Did you find yourself needing vices? Did you find yourself 
more focused on how you felt after weighing yourself or how you looked in the mirror than you were focused on seeking God. Just evaluate where you might have noticed dieting habits because that is you still leading with your intellect. So just pay attention to that. Spend some time, invest in that. Like I said, that is self-care. That is you taking a look at and grading yourself based on how well you're doing and where you need to make modifications. Okay, number six. Okay, number six. Spend time looking at your failures. You know, these are your failures. These are just the things that you wish you would have done differently or that you would have done better. Spend time looking in those areas and ask yourself, like legit, put your butt in a seat with a notebook and assess what's going on there. How can you change it? Ask yourself these questions. What's going on with me? How can I change these things? Because here's the truth. You know the answers. I know this because a lot of you are my personal coach or my personal coaching clients. And when I ask you these hard questions, you come up with the answers. The answers are already inside of you. You're just not getting alone and asking. You might be afraid of what the answers are. You might just be in a situation where you're like, I'm hard to face. I'm, I'm having a hard time because I'm afraid of facing these answers. And maybe you're just not willing to ask them of yourself because you know it's going to require that you do hard things and that you change them. I encourage you, take a look at today's scripture, 1 Corinthians 2, 5. Today's scripture, talk, what is today's scripture? This is what today's scripture says. 1 Corinthians 2, 5 says, this is Paul speaking to uh, this is Paul speaking. He said, I did this so you would not trust in human wisdom. Are you, ask yourself this, are you trusting in human wisdom? Because that is you trusting your flesh, not your, not God. And I know this because I lived this. I lived this for so long and I wore the fat pants to prove it. I started facing and worshiping my comfort. I started believing my excuses instead of seeing what I could do when I saw my excuses as reasons to step out and to shake off the world. Okay, I'm already getting off on a tangent. Number seven, identify this forthcoming season's obstacles and assess when, where, and how on your daily and weekly schedule that you will shop and prep for this new schedule. Because like I said, for a lot of us, when we switch into fall, when we go into autumn, our schedules are changing. You know, your availability, the way that you approach things, the volume in your life is changing. It's either going up or it's going down. Maybe it's not changing at all. But the reality is, is in fall, there's change in how you're doing everything. Assess when, where, and how you will fold into, you will fold shopping and prepping your food in this next new season, especially being mindful of, you know, how we have to shop now in the world. A lot of us have to do all the different things with the shopping. You know what they are. Okay, number eight, determine your priorities. This is huge. So many of my clients, myself, I'm not excluded from this. Determine your priorities and pay attention to this. The key is not to prioritize what is on your schedule, but instead to schedule your priorities. If weight loss is your priority, stop letting life just happen to you. Assess your daily priorities. That's why I have you write out your goals every day. I don't have you do this so that you're conflicted between, you know, what are you doing seeking and what are you doing with your goals? I have you do this because I need you to be mindful of the fact that, yeah, you are, a, you're a human. You have physical things that you need to do every day so that you can act out the things that God wants you to do in the flesh. And all of them support what is going on in the spirit and you leverage you leverage the power of the spirit 
to master your flesh so that you can be obedient to the hard things that you don't want to do. So every day I need you to just really pay attention to what are my priorities. If I'm being obedient to my food today, it matters because what I do today affects the outcome of this week and the outcome of this week affects the outcome of this month and this month affects the outcome of this year and all of this comes together cumul cumulatively because that's where your weight loss happens every day builds upon itself so what I need you to do is assess what your priorities are and put those on your schedule don't just be a victim to your schedule well I'm too busy and the kids and I wake up at this time and the kids are already up and they're making pancakes and they're doing the things and then when I walk in the kitchen I'm frustrated and then I eat the pancakes <laughs> I encourage you to just pay attention what are your priorities and to schedule those because when you are priority focused and God is on that list life change change happens life changes and change happens but you need to position yourself for success and you do that by in your physical in your body planning your priorities okay that was number eight there's some things I want to say about number eight before we go on to number nine okay I want to talk a little bit about your priorities especially as it relates to the things that we do here in the seekers method what are your priorities? I encourage you. This is the number one thing I see slipping, especially in summer. So this is why I want to talk about it as you, as you start moving into, into autumn. Prioritize your morning and your evening routines. Okay? I mean, this is a, this is a physical discipline that even in the summer, I'm so thankful that I still do. I mean, it's just autopilot now your morning and your evening routines matter okay so every night if you know you're getting up in the morning and you're going to be getting up early and it's going to be hard set your alarm clock go to bed a little bit earlier get your coffee ready get whatever you know for me i set the breakfast table for the children like it's just one of those things that when i wake up in the morning it's a gift to me that's my self-care so every night i make the coffee i prep my waters i make sure that for me the kitchen is clean i make sure that if i want to be asleep by 9 30 8 45 i start prepping the kitchen i start doing all the things i need to do at nine o'clock i'm in the bathroom i'm washing my face i'm doing my evening routine I'm in bed, I'm reading some things, I'm calming down. I wake up in the morning, it's, it's hard, and I just pray, God, in the morning it's gonna be hard for me to wake up, please give me the strength to wake up. And there's a difference maker when you invite him in to all the things. He wants to be included in all the things. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is prioritize your morning and your evening routines. I even go so far, you've seen this in the Seekers Method, I prep my Bible study. I want nothing to get in the way. There are days where it doesn't go as planned, but I prep it. The other thing I would encourage you to, by way of us talking about um, priorities, is I encourage you to just pay attention to your bedtime schedule. Modify and prioritize your sleep. Your sleep elicits a hormonal response and from that it is a contributing variable to your weight loss success it's just a matter of fact if you're not getting enough sleep you're going to be weak around food it is all interconnected your body your body is beautifully perfectly designedly designed to require all of these things and the more you invest prioritizing your sleep the better and the easier all of the things are that you need to do on a daily basis. The next thing I wanna talk about with regard within the, the realm of your priorities is prioritize prayer time and study time. This is the number one thing. For those of you who are succeeding, it's because I see you walking with him. It's because I see and I know that your prayer life is strong. It's because you have a relationship. You are not phoning it in. You are praying. You are in prayer constantly all through the day. You spend and you make time for him. Prioritize him. It doesn't matter if you're a morning or you're a morning person or you're a night person. Prioritize him. 
Oh, that's my prayer that you hear that. If there's nothing else you hear today, it's that you hear that. Okay, that was all number eight. Again, the notes will be coming up. Number nine. Number nine and number 10 are kind of a two-part thing. <clears throat> number nine is a question. Ask yourself, what are the reasons that I failed at blank? What are the reasons? Because like I said earlier, you know the answers. If you've already identified the things that you failed at in the seekers method and failure is your own barometer like it's your own it's not based on what i say you have to do and you didn't do it well it, it's things that you think oh i feel i feel convicted in this area i should start doing it and you didn't do it or you know what they are ask yourself the question what are the reasons i failed because God loves it when you ask the questions and you invite him in and you start to just get alone with your thoughts because that's where your wisdom is. It's all inside of you already. It's just a matter of you digging and the way that you dig to uncover the next level is through asking the questions and then inviting God in to help you identify the answers. For my one-on-one -on -one clients, for those of you on here, you know that's where it comes from. Okay, number 10. All right, where's number 10? <laughs> oh, don't you love it? Nothing like just being live and, um, okay, here we go. So number seven, or number nine was, ask yourself, what are the reasons that I failed? Number 10, then ask yourself, is it true? Because a lot of times our natural reaction to asking ourselves why we failed is we like to come up with excuses. So ask yourself, is this true? Is this just an excuse? And then spend some time, pray about it and journal about it. Because that's where your wisdom is. That's where your growth is. That's the next level that God wants to take you through. So as we wrap up this last seeker sesh of the summer season i want to invite you and encourage you over these next 40 days to join me in just reading through the book of romans you know go at your own pace and and to just see how you can make these scriptures come alive even in weight loss find how you can make it relate to your weight loss journey because God has something there for you and he wants you to just go deeper with him. But you need to practice it. You need to just get in the word on your own and to just, you know, see how you can make the scripture come alive and to deepen this walk on your own without a Christian life coach guiding and, you know, feeding you all of this stuff every day. Go deeper with God, just the two of you. And you're just gonna be blown away if you actually invite him in and do all of these things that I'm just encouraging you to do. Um, so that's really everything I have for you today. I wanna to go back into some of the questions that I see here, so bear with me a second. All right, so let's see. Becky says, look at your mindset shift. Um, I love it. First Corinthians 2, 5. Thank you for posting that for me, Becky. You are always so good. Set your mind on the things above with your schedules. It really does help to write the goals daily. It really does. It really does. And for th some of you in the thinner circle, I would encourage you, review what your values are and align every single day in accordance to those values. It's a difference maker. I only know it because I've started doing that and it's changing me. Martha says, leverage the power of the spirit to stay on your God mission. Let nothing derail you. Yes, let nothing derail you. It is so easy to be convinced that what you're doing in the physical matters more than what is going on in the spirit. And Martha is so right. Let nothing derail you. Let nothing derail you. Penny says, keep going. God is the difference maker. Absolutely. He is. We all know this. We just need to be in a community and have the encouragement and be reminded. And so many of us, so many of you on this live right now are seeing the physical manifestation of what is changing on the inside, changing yourself from the inside out 
is where it all is, where it all begins. Becky says, sleep is a huge key for me. Becky, you are so right. Think about your camping trip <laughs> and what happened after. Yeah, all of us, you know that. You know when you're sleepy, how you react to temptation, how you might be weak in all of the things. It weakens our flesh. Bobby says, Romans is the book I'm studying. And yay, that is so good. Oh, you know, Beck, Bobby, I should tell you, um, earlier this week, like massive revelations from the book of Romans came to me. And um, it was funny because as I saw, I think in the Seekers Method, it was one morning where the scripture was Romans. I like heard the internal dialogue. You know how you get your own internal dialogue thing going on? I heard myself say, well, I remember saying, oh boy, if I'm going into the book of Romans, I'm not coming out. <laughs> and it's true. I've been there all week. So I just encourage you, keep going. You know, Bobby, as you're doing that study with your women's Bible study, um, as you're studying the book of, of Romans, just even in weight loss it, you know, go to those scriptures and ask God, you know, what is this? What are you teaching me here about my weight loss journey? I, I just love how God uses our weight loss journey to help us see physical evidence of what he really wants us to know as he spiritually matures us. And I love that because there's not a lot of other areas where these things really have an opportunity to take shape. You know, if you really think about it, I mean, I, well, I could digress. I'm, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Ooh, you guys, I have a bird phobia. I don't know what it is. And so doing a live video outside is always entertaining for me. Um, I started reading Romans. Ah, perfect timing, Becky. Becky and Bobby both. I love that. Penny loves Romans too. Penny says, I love the thinner circle. Yes. Um, powerful. Love that community of women. Um, I do too. I'm so thankful. I loved doing our fast together. Um, if you want to go deeper, sign up. Yeah. A lot of you have received a personal invitation to the thinner circle. Um, if you're struggling in any capacity and you know, and it's not even just about the struggle. It's just about needing that community to go deeper so that you have the accountability just with the small things. If you need reminders and girls in the thinner circle, all I can say is the revelation that I received this week changed my life again. Like I'm just, I'm so in awe of God. So ladies, I've rambled enough here today. So that is this, the, the, sum, the end of the sum, Sunday Seeker sesh for the summer season. <laughs> um, I love you. It's been amazing to be in this together. I don't usually like doing it in the summer because everybody gets so bu busy that they have a hard time following it. But I don't know, you guys just, maybe it was COVID or whatever it was. Some of you were, were just ready to go deeper. And you did. And I just thank you so much for just staying with me during the summer and through COVID and all of the things. I prayed over each of your beautiful names this morning as I tagged each one of you. I encourage you, don't see these next 40 days as you flailing and struggling. Mm -mm. See it as an opportunity for your blessing prep, okay? See this as blessing prep. Start preparing your life for the forthcoming blessing. Remember, it's just like I always say, you, God isn't going to do for you what he has equipped you to do. This is your season of equipping yourself. Prepare yourself for this blessing. It is here. He wants to bless you, but he needs you to stop approaching some of these things in your head knowledge. And instead, he wants you to go deeper and to trust him and to activate your faith coming right from your heart knowledge, your faith knowledge in your knower not by what you're distracted by on this world. All right, I love you all. Bye, ladies.